Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today I have the honor of speaking to David Sanchez, tenor saxophonist, and I'm happy to say a Latino, a proud Latino, and a Grammy Award winner. My people, we got Latinos in the house, Grammy winners. David, how are you today? David, how are you? Thank you, thank you. I'm well, I'm well. Thank you so much for having me, uh, inviting me, Sarah. It's a, a big pleasure. You know, we have we have to represent. But David, I know about you. I know a little bit about you. I know you're a great uh, a musician, but I want you to tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Well, you know, I uh, was born in Puerto Rico, grew up in, grew up in Puerto Rico as well. And, uh, you know, I was uh, inclined since early age to music. I just, I just love music, you know, and, and um, in my, you know, I have to say my family, you know, uh, although my parents were non and you know, they, they didn't play any instrument, they were non-musicians, but they, they loved me. My, my father, especially, was uh, what we call a melomano, like he's like crazy about music. And I had this collection and my mother was musically in, inclined. Like she appreciated good music, but also I clearly remember she uh, had great ears. Yeah, like great ears. I mean, like like she could carry melodies and with my aunt and these two second voices and stuff like that. So that's being around that. And then I, I'm, uh, I, I am the youngest, you know, so between middle brother, my middle brother and I, it's like maybe like nine years difference. And then, then my sister, my, the, you know, my other sister, they, so I was, yeah, and when I was growing up, you know, they, you know, obviously their uh, identity, you know, obviously in general, it's more, it's form has already musically too, you know, so they listen it to, so that helped too. My brother had instruments in the, in the at home and my sister, play around with the guitar, but, but especially my brother had the percussion instruments. Yeah, he, he was always from an early age, you know, like he had this drive towards percussion. And I would say between, you know, between being around the, all the, the, the music and the recordings and my mom at church with the, with the choirs and this and that and get togethers and Christmas and, my, and the percussion instruments, that, that inevitably that kind that of influenced you that influenced, influenced you. me and took me to the to in the, in that in the music direction of course not later not, not you know uh i was eight maybe and you know i was way into listening to all this music and playing mainly percussion and drums and uh not until i was like 11 going to 12 that's when I first uh, started like like getting like formal musical training. What you know, school like, did you go to? What school did you go to? And and went to La Escuela Libre de Música in Puerto Rico, in Atorrey, Puerto Rico. She, uh, that, that, that was an unbelievable experience. Just before taking the auditions, you know, you, you, you basically from seventh, uh, great to to like you graduate from senior year high school so it's six years and uh uh just before taking you know you have to take an uh, exams and attitude test and you know all that stuff you have to audition you know so just but before the audition you know just when I, you know when i was 11 i was already taking some piano classes to you know piano lessons and uh you know that then shortly after that you know that i took the exam you know and and uh you know i i, I was in the school I, I i you know passed the audition but the, the the only one thing is that i was intended intending to play percussion you know like, or, or enter as a percussion player and unfortunately they had bad news for me they said that uh it, you know, basically the whole uh, registration was 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 full, right. and uh, and uh, you know, I, it was you know, it was a, a big disappointment. I, I must admit that back then, anyway. So uh, they asked me to choose a different uh, instrument, and uh, you know, I, I I wonder sometimes why I chose the saxophone, but but I think one of the reasons is because I have heard a commercial 
on TV back in those days. And, and I heard, and be, between that and the recording, and I, I always was, the, the sound, I guess the vocal, kind of like a, sort of like a, yeah, you, you, you feel this like, You heard the sax boy, crying. You heard boy. the sax crying. Yeah. Yeah, you hear like a voice alive uh, sound, and I guess that's why I felt. That's I guess that's why I was like, okay, the saxophone, and and yeah, and you know, I, I ended up staying playing saxophone. So that's that was my beginning. Yeah, but but it was it, it was great. It was a great experience being in that. Uh, it's a performing arts school. Just so for those who don't know. The, you know, Escuela de Música is one of the, the, it's very important, it's one of the very important institutions, in my opinion, in Puerto Rico. It has uh, produced an um, uh, unbelievable amount of talent from classical to, to you know, like classical European, you know, classical music to like, uh, you know, uh, uh, to, uh, salsa, uh, 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 pop music, jazz, uh, I mean, you know, you mentioned. I mean, like from yeah, I know a couple of I know a couple of artists that went to the school. I think Gilbertito Santa Rosa went to the Escuela Libre de Music. Gilberto Santa Rosa. And he got Rosa. kicked out. And he got kicked out. He got kicked out. <laughs> yeah, Gilberto Gilberto Santa Rosa, <laughs> like like uh, Edwin eh, Clemente. Eh, 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 Edwin Clemente. Eh, but you know, Cheo went to to the Escuela Libre de Música in Ponce. Right. So, right. There, there's several ones. You know, the Ponce. They had the Libre de Música in Macao. And it's a shame that in Atorre, which is the one in San Juan, the one that I that I, that I went, uh, it, it's a shame that the, at some point the, the government Puerto Rico, you know, it was threatened the school to close. Period. Yeah. And, and 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 you know, the first chair of the New York Philharmonic, and he was the first chair in clarinet uh, in a, a Philadelphia Phil, uh, uh, Philharmonic. Uh, the Philly Orchestra and now and and the Met, he started off in the Met. Then now he's the first chair of the New York Philharmonic, Ricardo Morales, from the from Morales family. They right. all graduated from from La Escuela Libre de Música. A first chair of the Madrid uh, uh, Sevilla Symphony and Madrid Symphony, both trombones. First year they graduated in the school for all ends. The UK oh, well, the, so even, can... even even Tengo Calderon went to the school. I mean, like you know, like he he, he did not graduate, and I don't think either. But but bottom line is that the the the, the, uh, the school is an uh, is essential. So for, for, can for, you say that the Escuela Libre Music helped you get involved in the music industry? For sure, okay. yeah, for sure. I mean, like it was a great uh, platform to to have a sense of in a, a general sense, of course, mm -hmm. of music as a whole. And because um, even back then, later on, it, it got even better. But back then, it was a little more conservative. You know, it's like classical, you know, European classical. And they had this yeah. ensemble called the the. Uh, the uh, but they had the band. Which is was different than orchestra. They had band, and that band in particular. So it's not only it was like a brass band, woodwind and brass band. And that one, we would do mixed material, you know, like things that are a little more kind of like hybrid between classical, but more from the pop world, like or jazz, or you know. And then they have the other ensemble that we all you know love, you know. It was called the dance band. And in the dance band, you, 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 that was the place that you really get a sense of a broader, uh, I guess, a broader way of, 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 uh, of music uh, in general, in terms of genres. Right. You know, you listen, you play like from Tito Rodriguez, something from the repertoire of Tito Rodriguez. The oldies but goodies. The oldies but yeah. goodies. Yeah, from Machito or maybe, uh, uh, so, you know, something from Count Basie Orchestra or... or uh, so that was really interesting because it was really... Now that I've reflect, reflecting and going back to some of the stuff that we were playing when we were kids, I was like, oh, wow, this was a great exposure to getting a sense, a taste of what is, you know, music as a whole. And, and, and the, you know, representing different, being inclusive, I guess that's what I'm trying right. to say. But so, I know that you, that you finished the Escuela Libre de Musica, and a lot of musicians, they just finish the school and then they go into their, the, into their career. 
But you didn't do that. You continued your studies after the Escuela Libre de Musica. What school did you go to to continue expanding your skills? Yeah, well, um, <laughs> it's a process in here. I have to say, I have to, you're right. You're totally right in what you said. Like, you know, I saw people that immediately after performing our school, they just may basically you know, pursue, um, you know, studies anymore. Uh, the thing with me is that I, I, I cannot say that it's a little weird because I cannot say that I was like, oh, okay, I'm in school and, you know, and the school was like being in this, uh, alienated thing that you not, don't have contact with the actual world. For me, it was different and I'm, I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm so blessed to, to say that it happened this way. I, I was still in high school and, and, and actually, you know, my last two, uh, when I was in uh, 11, you know, like, uh, yeah, the senior and the junior year. So uh, uh, those two years, I was already working. You know, okay. uh, I started working professionally, like, you know, doing little things in here and there. You're doing little gigs, little gigs. Yeah, it was, I, I was doing gigs, you know, like, and uh, you know what? I'm going to take advantage of this opportunity to, 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 you know, I'm going to go, I'm going to go right to your question. But at the same time, since this was uh, today, I, you know, got up with the sad, sad, sad news of one of my mentors and great man, the great master, one of the visionaries of the music, Roberto Rojena pass away. He did? Yes, yes, oh. yeah, uh, yeah, he did, he did. And I have to say, since we're talking about the subject, I think it's very, it's the perfect opportunity for me to say, and when I was like 17 going into 18, uh, and I was still kind of like from transitioning from Escuela Libre de Musica to go to, to college. And, um, <laughs> and I went to, uh, you know, like I was a little, undecided i was like well maybe maybe i study some you know like i go to the university of puerto rico and which i did i did my first year there and i was still in the music program and everything yeah they but have I a was, good music program yeah but i was i was the reason i went there was not the music program it was like because i was thinking i might pursue psychology as a as you know my studies and but that didn't last too long it was only I, but not even not even a quarter of the year has started and i was already starting my applications as a transfer to go to what i was going to go next but with that being said that time between la libre and the university in Puerto Rico, that freshman year roberto roena was being a part of the apollo sound was yeah, my I remember school. it well Trust was me. my school you know like that that was a, a, a essential part uh, did you just, play with the Apollo sound? You played with the yeah, Apollo sound? Well, with Roberto, yeah, you know that, and and uh, I, you know, I had the, the the not only that, but you know, that was his big recording, uh, Regreso. You know, after a long, a must uh, 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 awaited, you know, really, you know, like a recording album because you know he's been all these years without without recording and had the, the situation with the taxes and and all that craziness that happened uh, before. So he was sort of like out of the picture. That was his comeback, you know, most anticipated recording, Regreso. And I was part of that recording, it's amazing. I still have the album, you know, and just to look at the album and see the credits, David Sanchez, it's like, that's amazing. I'm gonna have to amazing. look for that. I'm gonna have like, to look for that. Regreso, yeah, and Papo Sanchez, you know, like one of the original singers was there. I remember clearly till, till today, where, you know, we were doing the, the putting the bait, you know, like the foundation and everything. And I remember Gilberto Santa Rosa came to do some some of the sonidos, the vocals, the vocals, yeah, the vocals. For the, yeah, you know, like, and I was a kid, I was 17, I was 17. So, so, um, but with that being said, that was, I consider that as part of my development and when it comes to education as, as valid as the other. But I never lost perspective. I wanted to go to school because I knew that school, the balance, the right balance, when you're an artist, especially, you know, the right balance is every, and everything really, but especially in here, having uh, the right balance between the two is is, is relevant and, uh, and, uh, and helpful, very helpful because it keeps you grounded, like in a way like, okay, okay, this is how you deal things theoretically, 
in academia, but in reality, these are the things that actually happen. Right. You cannot lose perspective either of that because then you're going to go to a real world and then you'll be you'll be lost in translation like that. That's right. <laughs> if you will. So, <laughs> so we can summarize, first of all, Escuela Libre de Musica was very important, but the experience acquired while you were playing those gigs while you were going to college was as important as that, the practice. Like you would say, la practica. Uh, yeah. So... La escuela libre, la práctica, and you went, and then you decided that's when you made your decision if you wanted to stay I in made that genre or go to another field. But you decided on music. What school yeah. did you go to after that? I, I went to Rutgers University in New Jersey. New Jersey, and New I, Brunswick, New Jersey. Yes, New Brunswick, New Brunswick. Yes, that's right. And and I, I went there, and and, and I, you were, we were talking just before the. The, the meeting, you know, and, and, and you're right, you know, I, I want, I, I applied to different schools. And you got accepted to different schools, right? Yes, and then, but the reason I chose this over Boston or over other schools is because I knew the train, the, it was like like 45 minutes or so to get to the city. And I knew everything that I wanted was in the city. So that's really the main reason, and New York City. So right. that's, the, that, that, that's the main reason really I chose uh, you know, my, uh, one of the main reasons, anyway, I chose New Brunswick. So can I assume then that one of the reasons you picked New Brunswick was because uh, the Blue Note was there uh, uh, in in the village. They used to have this other this other club that they played every Thursday, Latin jazz and all that stuff. In other words, the best music is found in New York City. So that was the what best, was the All the clubs, you know, back then. I mean, I've. I've I have to say I was part of the generation. I tell the, the kids now, you know, in school, so it's amazing, you know, to for me to be sort of like that generation, that sort of like that last generation that actually have contact with some of the true creators and masters that were still alive and then they started leaving us sort of like between like uh, late 80s to 90s and then the 2000s and so on. And I was blessed enough to be part of the generation that was able to in not only see and witness, but interact. And uh, it, it, to add to my bless, blessings and, and um, you know, fortune, really, uh, I just, as I was going to Rutgers, uh, I remember I was in Puerto Rico getting ready to, to, to move and everything. And they, a uh, 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 um, good friend of mine, um, a trumpet player, Charlie Sepulveda, yeah. told me like, hey, listen, uh, Eddie Palmieri is going to come to 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 do this show. And, and I remember it was December. And, and uh, you know, he's mixing. He was put, you know, he wants to use some people from New York, but some other people that are already in the in, in La Isla, in Puerto Rico. So, so I was like, oh, okay, you know, hey, listen, so I'm available. So they call me. And as a result of that, Eddie, we connected right away. And Eddie was like, man, where is this kid? I was like, well, by the way, he's moving to, to New York, you know, because he's going to go to study. And surely, and sometimes a few months later, I received the call and, you know, they started calling. So I had this amazing experience of being a freshman, like a sophomore, really, but it was a transfer and went oh. to... To okay. to uh to New, to New Jersey at Rutgers University, I was at the same time playing with Eddie Palmieri, which is crazy, you know. <laughs> I mean, so what about. we call it, what, what you guys call in the industry. So out of un vente tu, you established a relationship a with relationship. Eddie Palmieri yeah. and many other, and that, my my friend, is definitely definitely it's something that you are blessed because that is like one of the top. In, in in our music so yeah yeah like i said you yeah. were blessed you were blessed yeah, I, I i was i was and and uh, it was amazing because you know I, I i was able to go to school and and but at the same time playing at the all these amazing places like from the village gate you know with the where they do the salsa mid jazz yeah. to like sobs to like you know uh sweet basils uh village vanguard later on blue note you know like you're dealing with that it's like at that time it's like almost the center music per se that new york was the center of the world without a doubt right and, and um uh and you could get to see all these people 
So you add that education and you know you, you see both worlds and how how they uh, yeah how they uh, how they move and how and, uh, and, and uh, most importantly is our experience right how we deal with it with the time as we go as we develop as as, 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 as a person as individuals and uh, and first and then the, you know how does that translate and you can reflect in the music as well. So, so we can gather and summarize that your your education, Musica and Rutgers University, plus the experience that you acquire while you're playing those side gigs while you're going to school in Puerto Rico, and luck also, or bendiciones if you want to call it, mm -hmm. allowed you to get involved in this career, move up the ladder, but Moving up the ladder, I know sometimes you may have had a little bit of luck, but I know there's sometimes some challenges. Tell me how you overcame some of those challenges. You know, uh, I have to say, uh, it, it's, it's, it's hard work, you know, like, it, you know, I reflect in general and I always say, wow, man, you know, I was, I was such a, you know, like, man, what? It's, it's luck too, you know, it's like you're at the right time, the right you know, place at the right time. Um, it's a fortune, you know, you know, to very fortunate. I was very fortunate, but at the same time, like, but you know what? Wow, I, was, I, I was really disciplined. You know, I, when you manage the time, that time that you, that you, you are the manager of that time. We manage that time. Uh, you, you know, it's years of doing that. You know, so it's not like, you know, some other things that you just okay. You, I'm working. And you you punch. Remember back in the day, you you go to work and you punch. You know, and then you they punch a card, yeah. And they punch, right? That's a very old school way, right? But but similar, like you know, in other words, you got higher and you have your time. Is it is what it is. But when you are an artist, and especially in the case of musician, that you the time there's no none of that. So if you don't have the discipline to distribute your hours and be wise about how you spend your time, you you could you could be in trouble. We could be right. in trouble. And, uh, and 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 going to your question, I mean, I, yes, I was in the right. You know, like I had all these incredible blessings and whatever. But at the same time, I over overcame adversity and 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 uh, challenges just working hard just working hard when I got in, in, it was a big time transition for me back back in when I went to to Rutgers I remember myself even depressed some sometimes like just just because it was so different culturally speaking you know too and it was crazy I mean when I went to New Jersey when I'm I remember even in the dining areas it was so fragmented it was so segregated like people Latinos I got with Latinos you know, like African Americans, you know, mainly with African Americans, you know, it, it was really interesting because, you know, at that time as a young man, I didn't, I, 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 I acknowledge what I was seeing, but I, I, I lied to you if I, if I tell you that I grasped and understood, had an understanding right away of what was happening. All I could tell you is that yeah, you see some people, you know, together, but in general, like you see kind of like why you know anglos and white americans you know whatever with that you know like got their thing at the end the of the little day. clicks the little oh, clicks the little clicks everybody's identity okay right right and so so for me that was that was shocking that was shocking because you know i never saw um you didn't live in I never saw it that way. I never, yeah, I never saw it that way. That, that in that, uh, even if it's existed in Puerto Rico and whatever, but but not like that, you know. So so I was just like, wow. And then how do I fit in? So it was it was very challenging because, uh, you know, I uh, I could, you know, the, some of the Latinos that were there, not perhaps they were not Latinos from. Yeah. Typically, they were Latinos from the state, so what they call Latinx now, you know, so Latinx, you know, so they, so, so, it, it, which, you know, like they are, 
you know, were raised and, 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 and submerged into it, uh, this culture in the United States, as opposed to coming from the island. So it's a different environment. And then in my case, then you have the, you know, the, you know, I could see a brother, an African American brother crossing the street, and we acknowledge each other. It's the first time, one of the first times that I, I saw, oh, well, man, do I know that guy? I'm like, and then I realized, oh no, this is solidarity. Mm -hmm. okay? It's solidarity, you know. So, so that only here. That that doesn't happen in Puerto Rico. <laughs> And I, I could see another black person working. Yeah. You know, like, well, you, David, you, you live that? you you live what many of other of our Latinos have lived in the past, long before you or me. For mm -hmm. example, Roberto Clemente lived it. Orlando yes, Cepeda right. lived it. Um, Arturo and, Schomburg lived it. So and, there are and, and worse. That, yeah, and, but and that's worse. a topic. That's a topic that I want to go into later in the year, and I'm, I'm going to invite you to be part of that panel. But to move on, uh, uh, to move on, I want to summarize education, luck, well, mm -hmm. education, experience, and a little bit of luck, and the desire, and the thrive, and the discipline got you to where you are today. But it, where you are today allows you to do a lot of things. And what I want you to tell us is that in what different aspects of your career have you included parts of your culture of being a Latino? Being a Latino, how have you included that in your music? Well, you know, I, I pretty much, pretty much from the beginning, because of these experiences that I have with, you know, mixing up people from the, you know, parting from the roots like Roberto Roena, uh, Jesus Cepeda, then later on Eddie uh, Palmieri, you know, uh, I basically from from the very beginning, you know, putting that together with the school and experiences that I have. Uh, in school and putting them together, basically, I, that's that, you know every recording I made from the my from the departure to like till like now, really. But man, the departure on Melasa, the, my culture was involved. The the um, uh, roots, the traditional instruments were there all the time. So it's it's, it's basically like telling my story. Right. You know, it's, using that to tell my story where I come from and, you know, where I'm going. And we appreciate that. Uh, and I have it, by the way, I have those two CDs that you just mentioned, but you know, that's a different story altogether. But based on what you're saying, do you think it's important and essential to have Latino representation in the music industry? Oh, oh, yeah, extremely important. It, it, you know, it'll be incomplete. Yeah, <laughs> because Latinos contribute that from what this, this society is from, from the beginning. So, and and you know it's yeah, I mean being saying the word Latino is by, by, by the way is 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 more complex than some people uh, think. Yeah, because there's so, like all kind of you say Latin America and it's huge. Oh, we we're, yeah. we're very diverse within our own culture. So and that's right. a blessing because we bring much more because of our diversity right. in our in our culture. Um, right. And uh, I, and I'm glad you made made that statement. Music would be incomplete if there was not our contribution to the music. That was a great statement. I love that. I love that soundbite. Mm -hmm. The other question I want to ask you: I know you're a Grammy Award winner, and I know you've been nominated several times. I think it's three or four times. I'm not too sure because I follow your career. Uh, but tell me how it felt when you won the Grammy for the best large ensemble album. But wait a minute, before you answer that, tell me how you felt when you got that call. Dave, Davi, you are nominated for the Grammy. How did you feel? Well, uh, amazing from the first time, from the, from the very first time. I've been, just to, to, to be right to the point, I've been nominated seven, eight times. Okay. Uh, and, and But my first nomination I got for a recording called Obsession. And I think that was the most shock. I wasn't expecting it. So when I heard, I got a message uh, I, you know, it just shocked me. I was like, wow, you know, I didn't even, yeah, you know, it's one of those things, you do the music, whatever, then you're moving on. And um, that particular one is special because it was the first one. That's your but baby, that, that's your baby. Right, but with that being said, every single time that happened after that recording, it was equally, you know, I was equally like grateful that, you know, that they would acknowledge me. And okay. that was, That's you know, what they nominated you. Now tell me, how did you feel when you got the Grammy? 
Oh yeah, well, I mean, that, that, it was amazing. It was amazing. I was like, you know, I mean, you know, at first, like, are you kidding me? Like, you know, in disbelief, and then it's just like filled with happiness, and you know, it's just it's, it feels really good because you know, it's like you know, they rec it's like an acknowledgement of like from your peers and the people from the industry, and they 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 acknowledging your, your work. So as a Latino and, and, and many times when we, we have achievements and, and do things, when you received that Grammy, I know you were proud as, as David Sanchez, but were you also proud and then it, at any moment did you say, man, look what I've done for Puerto Rico. Look what I've done for the Latino community. Yeah, oh yeah, of course. Yeah, because you know, uh, uh, you know, like you, like, I, like what I was saying before, like, you know, like you have come to a new place and you finding your, uh, I guess your, you know, you you try to find your spot, your layer. Where where do I fit in here? And 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 uh, and you see what is this all about and the complexities of all these different cultures, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, and sometimes how many times we could be, uh, I don't know the the, the right word, but if we could be a little bit like like like. Uh, in the background, you know, or in ex inexistent, let's put it this way, in some ways. And yeah, so you feel like, you know, yeah, this is an opportunity, you know, it brings joy and to say like, you know, wow, yes, this is for, this is beyond me, you know, and, and you, 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 that, that obviously is, is very, uh, gratifying, I guess, you know, and so you, 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 uh, you, uh, you feel good, you know, you feel good inside about that. Now, as a Grammy Award winner, you looked as a role model by many, by many in the in, in the field and those who are up, who are, who want to get in the field. Um, what advice would you give those thousands of young uh, 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 Latinos and non-Latinos, of course, that are seeking to bring representation into the music industry? What do what kind of advice can you give them so they go, they they do it the right way? That they do the right way in, in meaning what? And uh, well, everything that involves the music. What kind of advice you would give a kid that's trying to come up and saying, "I want to become a musician"? What would you tell him? Okay, this is Sarita. I'm just graduating from high school, and I say, "Mr. Sanchez, I want to become a musician. I'm, I I want to be just like you when I grow up." What advice would you give? What do I have to do? What advice would you give them? Uh, I would. First of all, I would, I would tell them just be 100% uh, committed to, to, to what you want to do and love. Make sure that you love what you are intending to do uh, from, from within. And that's going to be the same foundation that is going to get you to the right place. That the, the passion, the love and commitment, you know, and, and then the next thing I would say is like, start it, go to the roots, go to the roots, find the roots, find out what your story is. We all have a different story. So the bottom line is find what is our story, what are our experiences, and the, the more clear we have what that is, the, the more it's gonna resonate when we are presenting what we or saying whatever is it that we're going to be saying it's going to so, have a, a deeper resonance be yourself be committed and love what you're wanting to do Indeed. great advice yeah. now we're going to be wrapping this up in a few minutes but david if you have the opportunity to send a message to the whole world in this current situation today what would the advice be well, I have to say, you know, uh, and especially in these complicated circumstances that we have this last year, especially, uh, you know, I would tell them, you know, you know, vacunate, you know, get vaccinated. Because Can I hear that again? Say that again. Vacunate, <laughs> you know, get vaccinated, and uh, you know, you know, trust, you know, like, you know, like, you know, we need to move forward. We need to move forward and and be considerate. You know, sometimes we need to. Be considerate. It starts with cons being considerate as a person. Be kind, and that's one. That's that. That's a, a, a good way of starting. By taking care of your, ourselves, then we take care of others. So, so, uh, and then stay in school. You know, I mean, study. You know, um, 
find out what is it that you love, especially. Don't be like so, so many people that are kind of like in limbo wondering, oh, maybe this, maybe that. You know, we're here for a reason and the time is short. The, 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 the clock is taken, it's been taken. Uh, and next thing you know, you're like half of your life is gone. And you, you know, you think, for, it's, this is very especially for the young people. I was young, I was young, we were all young once. And we, yeah. we all felt like, oh, we got all this time. And, you know, guess what? You know, time goes by fast. And we don't uh, uh, wake up, you know, you, we need to be awakened and, uh, and realize that we're here for, for a brief period of time. And we would put here on earth to do something. So the sooner we find out what is it that we love, the, the, the sooner we, we're going to find, you know, really happiness and, and living harmony. That's a great, great message. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have David Sanchez, a fantastic musician, Grammy Award winner, but most important to me, a friend. David, muchísimas gracias for supporting this initiative. Thank you so very much. And ladies and gentlemen, remember, and those who want to get into the music field, remember, commitment, discipline, stay in school. And for my Latino sisters and brothers that have not been vaccinated, vacunate. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much, David Sanchez. Chao. Gracias, Chao. David. Gracias, Sara. Gracias.